What's up guys, it's Dwayne from mountainbuck.com where we go from backyard to backwoods. And guys, today I'm checking out the number one best-selling trail camera on Amazon. I'm talking about this guy right here, the Vikery trail camera. And this guy has some really nice features, uh, some standard features you would expect in a trail cam that's twice as much as this. It also comes with a micro SD card and batteries so you can get it going right out of the box. So we're gonna get into this guy and compare it to another trail camera and just see how it makes out. I'm gonna test this thing fully for you guys. So hook me up, hit subscribe, let's get into this thing. So here we have, it says it's a waterproof. Um, they may mean water resistant, but it does have these pretty heavy duty buckles on here that kind of really strap down your waterproof type situation. So they say waterproof, I'm gonna say water resistant. We also do have a little locking hole right here. And when you open it up, you'll see you actually have a little uh, LCD screen here for you to preview your photos and videos, which is kind of nice. Uh, as I mentioned on those higher end cameras, you'll have some of these features. Here you got your programming stuff. Um, Right up top here is where you have your, I guess your on switch, your micro USB to transfer photos. And here's your little mic, here's your little micro SD card right up at the top here, if you can see that guy. Let's see if it's in there already. So it already comes with a 32 gig micro USB card right there. 32 gigs right there. So you're already loaded up out of the gate and you can take tons of pictures and videos right out of the box. So click it back in there. And yes, we have our off. We can go to test mode and we can go to on. So this little switch right here, uh, we go from off to test mode over to on. All right, what else we got in the box? So in addition to the trail camera and the micro USB card, we have our strap to strap this thing to the tree. We have four AA batteries. We also have a micro USB cable right here. And uh, we have various mounts. So. Let's see what we got. So right here, we've got a little uh, trail cam camera mount. And we also have a base plate here with some screws if you want to mount it in a variety of ways. But I'm just going to strap it to the tree like I always do. All right, let's get the batteries in this thing and power it up. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, they gave us four batteries, and when I opened up the inside of the camera here, I'm noticing that there are eight batteries, so I immediately think they messed up and didn't include them, but it turns out uh, you could turn this on right here, and you're good to go. So I guess we have some backup capabilities or extra batteries if you want to include them. That's, that's interesting. All right, so we're in countdown mode here. So if you could see here, I turned it on and it's already in countdown mode. So I believe it's going to be taking a photo or whatever. It does have the no glow uh, flash here as the higher end models do. Let's just walk through the menu. All right, so I guess you have to put it in test mode uh, when you want to edit the menu settings, add the date and time. Uh, set up your you know photo and video resolution things like that so it needs to be in test mode uh, before you could actually do anything if you're in on it's just I guess only gonna take photos or video so let's go to test mode uh, we got photo resolution photo series video resolution let's just see where we're at here I'm gonna hit OK all right and we are at the lowest setting right now for photos we got 
5 megapixels, 8, 12, 16, up to 20 megapixels on this thing. I'm going to bump this up to 16. Let's check out the video resolution. And anything from 640 by 480p up to 2688 by 1520 at 20, 20 frames per second. So I'm going to go with the highest uh, video resolution. I'm going to really chew through that 32 gig card right there. Uh, all right, let's see. Video length. Okay, this is pretty cool. And we're just going to go with 10 seconds. I don't want to burn through too much. Audio recording on shot lag uh let's see where we're at 30 seconds uh yeah i guess we'll well so that's kind of nice you can get it down to the second however much time you want to space out in between video recording so i'm gonna go 20 seconds sensitivity on the motion uh we'll leave it in the middle time and date i'm gonna set this up So I'm actually going to compare this to my Browning Dark Ops camera, which I know is a good quality camera. Uh, I'm going to set it to video because I really do like to see what the animals are doing for, you know, at least a 10 second clip just to see what's going on. If they're hitting my scrape or eating my food plot or whatever. I do like photos, of course, but video just tells me a better picture and creates a better story about what's actually happening, you know, up in my food plot and on my mock scrape and everything where I'm going to set this up. So I'm going to put it on video. And we're going to set this up side by side, actually right underneath my Browning Dark Ops trail camera. And we're going to see how we make out with the video. So I'm going to load this up, set it up next to my Browning. And we're going to check back when we have some video. We're going to compare the two and see how the number one selling trail camera on Amazon stacks up with a camera twice the cost. All right, so I've had this number one selling trail camera set up in the woods for a few days now, and here's what I learned. I really like a few of the features on here. Uh, the first one being the field of view you get with this thing. This, this has a very broad field of view, which means you're going to capture more action. There's several instances where this camera picked up stuff that was outside in the periphery that my Browning didn't get, and we'll get to that in a minute here. Uh, the other thing I really like is the ability to program this down to the second. So if you want to extend your video clips to 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, you can do that. You can also set the delay time for it to re-trigger. Uh, so I really like having that control here. Uh, also, this might seem kind of cheesy, but I've had some trail cameras which were difficult to know if they were on or not, right? So you press the button and you kind of stand around and hope that it's on. Sometimes you leave and you find that you haven't had the camera on for like a week and haven't recorded anything. So this takes all the guesswork out because it's a very simple switch. You put it in the on position, you know it's on. So I really like that feature. And the other thing I really like here, and let me just go to test mode so I can show you, is the the LCD screen we have right here. It's, it's actually a very nice feature just to preview uh, some of the, let's see what we got here preview your images so you don't have to pull the card you don't have to take it down to the house or whatever or put it in your phone um, you could just queue up the image or the video right here and press play and you can see what's going on oh and that's me right there we're recording so, hang on one second let's go back to view all right uh, i hit the wrong button my bad here you can see the uh the turkeys in the food plot there so it's kind of a nice feature just to be able to preview your images preview your videos right on this little LCD screen right here. So here's the video I recorded over the course of a few days, a week or so. So let's check it out. I'm going to put up the browning stuff first. So the first shot here is me walking uh, with my pole saw. I'm going to cut out some shooting lanes. And the browning picked me up about halfway across the screen. But so did the Vickery. So I think this is because I just turned the cameras on. Um, it didn't quite pick me up till just a little bit through the shot. So you can see there, they're both relatively good. The video quality uh, looks very good on both um, the audio. So here's where I was wondering, I didn't have audio with any of the Vickery uh, video. And I'm wondering if I messed up, I didn't put the audio on because there are options for that. So I'm going to have to go back and check that out. But there was no audio with the Vickery recordings, but that might be my fault, might be my bad on that one. 
The second shot we have here is a little buck coming in. And this is where you could really start seeing the field of view here. So in this first shot, the browning, he's coming in and he walks through. And then the second shot, you could see a lot more of what's going on with the Vickery mode because you can see how much wider that range is and that field of view is on that. Here's a few more clips of this buck. Uh, the first one is the browning, of course. So that's the same video. It's kind of the same shot, but you get more of the action with the Vickery as opposed to the Browning. And this, this isn't a comparison video. I'm just using the Browning camera as a baseline because I know it's a good quality camera that I've used. I'm used to it. I understand what it does for me. And so I'm not comparing the two. I'm just using it as a baseline to make sure I didn't miss anything. And just a heads up, guys, both cameras that I used did miss certain things. So both of them didn't pick up something at some point during this little test I had. And here's an example. So the Vickery actually picked the same buck coming through. Uh, you can see a couple shots here and he walked through it, recorded two recordings where the Browning didn't get any of this stuff. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, the other thing is I see this little buck came and he hit my mock scrape. I didn't see it, but I could tell like the ferns and some of the grounds uh, dug up a little bit, scraped up there in the second shot from the Vickery. And what I can do if I want to is extend the length of that recording. So if I want to, uh, if I want to go in there and extend it out, say 30 seconds. So then I'd see 30 seconds of action of this little buck coming in, hitting the food plot, doing his thing, and then going back to uh, the mock scrape and hitting that mock scrape. That's what I can do. So I'll definitely set that up that way in the future. So I really like that feature. Uh, this next video, you can see with the Vickery, here's some other shots where the browning didn't pick it up and this is just due to the field of view and the trigger capturing that wider view here we have turkeys coming in way over from the side there uh, which you know the browning did pick that up but not until a little bit later so that was interesting and check this out so we have the turkeys here uh, zoomed in kind of feels like a zoomed in shot now with the browning and then we have the same shot a little bit later uh, of the turkeys with that vickery shot and you see that wild field of view there and check that guy out in the background. I don't know if you can see all the way up in the, the ladder stand. That's your guy right here hanging out, hoping some big buck comes in. But it was just some hens that day. So still something to look at. But anyway, you can see what I'm saying with that field of view. In this shot here, the Browning camera did pick up several videos of little squirrels coming in and doing their thing. And the Vickery did not. And the reason for this is because I most likely put it on that medium trigger sensitivity or motion sensitivity setting. I put it on medium because I didn't want to get the squirrels. I don't want to waste my time, waste my battery and my memory cards with squirrels and little things I don't care about. So the Browning did pick it up. I'm pretty sure that the Vickery would pick it up if I did set that, uh, that motion sensitivity up to high, but I kept it on medium and I'm happy I did. So that's just one discrepancy there between the Browning and the Vickery with the Browning capturing some smaller stuff the Vickery did not, but I think that was because I put it on that medium setting. So for my money, this Vickery camera, I mean, the expense of it with all the features you get, the LCD monitor, they give you the memory card, they give you the battery, they get you all set right out of the box to go. For this money, uh, the quality, in my opinion, the video quality is very good. I like the menu options. I like the control of being able to set the timers on everything. If you just want a cheap budget camera that's going to do a good job, this might be the camera for you. If you're buying multiple cameras, I know some guys like to put out two, three, four, time to, re, you know, time to redo your cameras, time to get new ones. This will save you a ton of money if you're gonna put a bunch of them out there. So this could definitely save you a lot of money. It is the number one selling camera on Amazon and for good reason, you get a lot for your money with this thing. So if you wanna check it out, uh, everything we talked about, the items are in the description below. Hook me up and hit subscribe guys. Thank you so much for hanging out and we'll see you on the next one.